everyone, it's Lisa from My Dreaming Soap. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for dropping by. Now today we're going to be making an, we need to call it an Aleppo type soap because it's one of those things that has a protected name unless you actually make the official Aleppo soap from Aleppo. Now, what do we need in an Aleppo soap? Well, the thing that makes it so special is laurel berry oil. Now, laurel berry oil can be quite difficult to source and one of the other things about it is it is incredibly expensive. Now, as soap makers, we're not allowed to make any claims about our soaps and how brilliant they are and what they do for you. All we're allowed to say is that they will get you clean. But this is a wonderful soap. It's so gentle and so mild, but it is expensive to make. And like a Castile soap, it takes a long time to get a good bar of soap. An Aleppo soap is actually pretty straightforward to make. And I'm going to give you a recipe in a little while so you can make your own Aleppo soap. But let's just have a look at the process and talk our way through it. And then we'll have a look at the recipe in a little while. So traditional proper Aleppo soap, as it were, as I've already referred to, is sort of like a Castile soap. It's a very pure soap. It's made up of a combination of olive oil, laurel berry fruit oil, and that's it from the point of view of oils. If you start adding in things like other types of oil, like coconut oil or shea butter or anything, or if you start adding fragrances in and things, then it's not a proper Aleppo soap as such. But if that's what you want to do for your soap, then go for it. Now, as you can see in my pot here, I had my two oils. I had my olive oil and my laurel berry oil. I've used mine at a rate of 70% olive oil and 30% laurel berry oil. And with an Aleppo soap, you can find amounts ranging from as low as 5% laurel berry right up to typically 30% is a good strong amount. Yep, you could potentially put more than that in, but it's not really very commonly found. Now, the laurel berry oil is a very distinctive oil. It has quite a pungent smell to it, sort of um, earthy type smell. And some of them can even have a slightly smoky type smell. And as you can see from me pouring it in here, mine has a really good deep green colour to it. So, as I said, it's a pretty simple recipe. You take your two oils, your olive oil and your laurel berry oil, and then you're just going to add your lye solution. And those are the only ingredients that you should have, let's say, in an Aleppo soap. Now, I always do quite a decent water discount for my Aleppo soap, the same as when I do a Castile soap. I use a 20% water to oils ratio. So therefore you can see that's quite a steep water discount. Now, why do I use such a water discount? Well, my normal soaps have 25% of water to oils. And I find with something like an Aleppo or a Castile soap, they can take quite a decent amount of time for you to blend and come to trace. Now, an Aleppo will actually come to trace a lot quicker than a Castile soap. The other reason for quite a steep water discount is the fact that a lot of olive oil type soaps actually don't like a lot of water. Okay? When you're actually blending olive oil and making, let's say you were doing a Castile soap, having a high amount of water can actually be really problematic. First, it takes a long time for you to get to trace and you hear of people burning out their stick blenders and all of that sort of stuff. But the other thing is high water will actually split away from your olive oil. So therefore, if you've got a lot of olive oil in a soap, a lot of water can be problematic to getting a good bar of soap. Okay. 
Okay, so let's get this blended up, shall we? And as I said, when you're doing an Aleppo soap, if you're using the laurel berry oil in your soap, this will actually come to trace reasonably quickly. If you've ever made a Castile and been blending and blending and blending for ages, you shouldn't have that issue here. Now, normally in most of my videos, I cut out all the blending and things like that because I'm going to go on and make some sort of design and that takes up a good deal of time and we don't have time for often the basics. So I thought this time what I will do is leave the blending in just to show you how quickly this does come to trace. So here I'm just going through, stirring with my stick blender but I do have my stick blender turned on. Now for me, I normally always blend everything on the lowest setting on my stick blender, but I do have it turned up high because I've got quite a volume of soap in here. I have actually got five kilograms of oil in here, which will make just under seven kilos of soap. So at this point, can you see that was reasonably quick? Because it's quite a lot of oils in there. I have actually come to a trace. I am going to stick blend it a little bit further because basically that's how we make our soap. So I am just going to do a little bit more stick blending and get it a little bit thicker for me to pour into the mould. But I don't want it too thick because I do want it to sort of even out and be nice and smooth in my slab mould. And then when I'm happy with the trace, it's just a case of just scraping every single bit of the soap that you can back into that pot. Because remember, this is an expensive recipe to make, so you really don't want to just be throwing any of this soap away. And that's basically it for how we actually make the soap. So now we just need to get it into our mould. I'm using a big slab mould, but obviously if you were going to make some Aleppo soap, you might want to do a smaller loaf of soap. So we're just going to pour it in. And of course, spend a good deal of time scraping all that amazing soap into our soap mould. Now, once I've poured my soap in and given it a good old tap down just to make sure I've released any possible air bubbles, I do tend to just let it sit for a little while just to firm up a little bit and then I just go and do a little sort of squiggly pattern on the top. And then once that's done, I will cover the soap nicely and it will go into the oven to see pop. So into the oven at 170 degrees Fahrenheit and I leave the oven on for about five minutes or so and then turn it off and leave the oven light on for a few hours and the soap in there overnight. So here's our soap unmoulded the next day and I'm just about to cut it into loaves. 
Now, one of the things you need to be really careful of with Aleppo soap and Castile soap, to be honest, is a lot of people feel that because they're made of liquid oils, that they take ages and ages and ages to harden up. And I think sometimes that comes from the long cure times that they have as well. But you do need to be careful, especially if you do quite a significant water discount. If you leave these soaps too long, they will become incredibly hard incredibly quickly. I find with mine, if I leave them any more than 24 hours, as in from the point that you've actually made them to the point that you're cutting them, they can be really difficult to cut. So don't fall into that trap of thinking that you need to leave them ages before you can cut them. Now this soap does have a amazing smell to it. It's quite a strong smell and almost I guess a little bit sort of medicinal, smoky, earthy, that sort of thing. But that smell does dissipate as the soap cures. It also has an amazing colour to it. But can you see that it has a darker band around the edge? So therefore that colour will change. In fact, what will happen as it cures is the soap will actually go a lighter colour. And then I'll just finish these soaps off by cutting the loaves of soap into bars. Now my bars for my Aleppo soap, I like them to have a sort of tall shape to them, but I like them to be quite fat. So not the normal traditional soaps that we make sort of normally when we cut a loaf of soap. I will stamp these soaps and I will do that the following day. I do stamp my soaps just with my I Dream In Soap logo. I know a lot of people when they make Aleppo soaps, they put an Aleppo style logo on them or stamp Aleppo into them. I tend to stay away from that. Aleppo is one of those protected names and therefore if you're not actually in Syria making the proper Aleppo soap you're not actually allowed to use it so therefore this will be sold as an Aleppo style soap and I'm not going to dress it up with any sort of fake logos or anything just my I dream in soap one Now whilst I'm cutting the rest of these bars of soap, I'm just going to go over the recipe. So if you want to make some of this soap yourself, then you can do so. I'm going to put up the recipe for one kilogram of oils. So you can see here that's 700 grams of olive oil. I actually use extra virgin olive oil when I'm doing my Aleppo soap. 300 grams of laurel berry fruit oil, 130 grams of lye, sodium hydroxide, and then 200 grams of water. Or if you're looking for a recipe to put into soap calc, you obviously would put in the size of the soap that you want to make, and it would be 70% olive oil, 30% laurel berry fruit oil, 20% water to oils for your added water and a 5% superfat. After these have been beveled and stamped, I then leave my Aleppo soaps to cure for a full year before I put them up for sale, which is again, I guess, another thing that adds to sort of the cost of making this soap. And then this is what the soap looks like after its year-long cure. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you like the soap and maybe you'll give it a go yourself. But to be aware that laurel berry oil is pretty expensive. If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, then why not subscribe to my channel? And if you did enjoy this video, why not give me a thumbs up? Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!